Hello, I am Dr. Bree, and I'm coming at you today with a little fireside chat about the top myths of pelvic health. So this is going to be really fun. I actually did a presentation in my local area recently, and I I brought these myths up and it was really fun. It was an interactive experience and a lot of people in the group were surprised at some of the myths that I brought to the table. So let's go ahead and get to it right now. I have my myths in front of me. So the first myth, maybe we could call it true or false. What do you think? True or false? Hint, all of the answers are false. Okay. <laughs> but let's just start with me here. So true or false, pelvic floor issues are just for the elderly. Is that true or false? So yes, that is a myth. Pelvic floor issues are not just for the elderly. Pelvic floor issues such as bladder leakage, pelvic pain, uh, bladder frequency, urgency, tension in the pelvic area, all of these are issues that people of any age can experience. So even though we think of this as something that maybe our grandmother or somebody in our family who's older deals with, it's for all ages that we need to think about and consider the fact that we need to know about our pelvic floor and know how to keep these muscles and this part of our body healthy for life. So second myth is that pelvic floor issues are just for women. This is definitely a myth as well. Many people think that either they think that pelvic floor issues are just for older people, or they think that they're just for women who maybe are pregnant or women who've been pregnant. And that is not true. While pelvic floor issues are definitely very common amongst women who've been pregnant or who are pregnant, they're actually something that can impact all genders. So I actually have some pelvic floor models right here, and it shows a male and a female pelvic floor from the inside. So let me get these set up for you so you can see them. So this is a male pelvic floor looking down into it. And this is a female pelvic floor looking down into it. So really, you can see that both male and female bodies have pelvic floor muscles. And this is looking at the muscles from the outside. So the way the superficial pelvic floor muscles look. And I'm not going to get into the anatomy today, but I just want you to know that men and women, all genders, all people, if you have a body, you have a pelvic floor and the potential to develop issues in those muscles, whether it's too tight or too weak and loose, uh, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what gender you are. You can develop issues with the pelvic floor. Okay. Next myth. Hey, goal exercises are the only way to exercise your pelvic floor. True or false? Oh, you already know it's false because these are all the myths about the pelvic floor. So no, no. Kegels are not the only exercise to strengthen and exercise your pelvic floor. In fact, Kegel exercises can actually be problematic for some people. Many people on this earth right now are dealing with too much pelvic floor tension. So a short, tight pelvic floor. And that can cause a lot of issues and can make Kegel exercises actually dangerous and problematic. Because Kegel exercises, oftentimes people are focusing on the activation, the contraction part of the Kegel. So Kegel exercise is named after a physician from many, many years ago, Dr. Arnold Kegel. And he taught people how to contract and relax their pelvic floor muscles. But a lot of people nowadays think of Kegels and they just think of strengthening, strengthening, contract, contract. And they don't focus as much on the relax part, which is just as important as the contract phase. And many people out there have too much tension in their muscles to begin with. A lot of people, their muscles are too short and too tight. And so doing strengthening Kegel exercises and just focusing and honing in on just the pelvic floor can actually aggravate some people's issues. It can make them worse because if you're just going like this with a muscle all day long, that's not good. We need the full range of motion in the muscles to actually successfully strengthen them. So too much tightness is not good. Ultimately, what we want is for people to learn how to relax their pelvic floor and contract it in coordination with the rest of the muscles of the core team. So the core, the core of your body includes the pelvic floor 
And it also includes other muscles as well, your abdominals, your back, your breathing diaphragm, even your hip muscles can be included in your core. So all of these muscles should be working together. You're all really quite connected. And so we don't always just want to isolate by Kegel exercises just to the pelvic floor. We want to get everything working together in concert and harmony and in balance too. So there's much more to pelvic floor fitness than just Kegel exercises. Okay, next myth. The best way to activate your core during Pilates or any core exercise is to suck in your abs, to pull in your abdominals. Okay, I'm going to read that one again. The best way to activate your core during Pilates or any core workout is to pull in your abs. Is that true or false? You're right. It's false. This is kind of a trick question. This is a myth. So you might be saying, what? Of course, I have to pull in my abs when I'm doing core work. Well, that's only half of the story, because like I just said, the pelvic floor is actually part of the core team. So when you just suck in your abs, when you just pull in your abdominal muscles and kind of suck in up here, that can actually be a real problem. Because what is happening is if you just suck in up high, but you're not thinking about the bottom part of your core, which is your pelvic floor, then that can cause a lot of downward pressure. So ultimately, when you are engaging your core for Pilates classes or any type of core workout, you want to activate your core from the pelvic floor on up. I call this zipping up. So zipping up my core. And the key here is you want to zip, but you don't want to grip. Zip, but don't grip. So the idea is it's a gentle activation of the pelvic floor and the deep abdominals, not just sucking in the upper abs. Because again, if you just suck in up top, it's like all the pressure has to go down. It has to go somewhere and the pressure is going to go down. And that pressure pushes on your pelvic organs. And if your pelvic floor, if you've forgotten about it, and if it's not engaged at all, it's just going to go splat <laughs> with your pelvic organs. In fact, this happened to my yoga teacher. My yoga teacher used to be a really big uh, exercise person for her core. She did a lot of core fitness exercises and Pilates and some really intense like ab blaster classes, but she had never been told about her pelvic floor. She had no idea it even existed. And so she was doing a lot of core work and always squeezing in her upper abs and just squeezing and pulling in her abs when she was supposed to engage her core. But what happened is one day she was doing some type of intense like crunch type ab exercise and she had wasn't even thinking about her pelvic floor and her pelvic organs, her uterus, completely prolapsed during one of the exercises. So it completely descended out of her vagina. This created a need for an emergency surgery. She had a complete prolapse of her uterus because she was not, she didn't know how to engage her pelvic floor along with the rest of her core when she was doing her, her exercises. And so if you don't think about your pelvic floor as part of your core, then you are very much at risk for developing issues such as prolapse. So please take this one seriously. Your pelvic floor is part of your core team. So when you are engaging your core, don't just suck in your abs up, up here. You want to think about the entire core, and that's going to give you that nice zipped up feeling. But just remember, zip and don't grip. So I don't want you clenching your muscles that can tighten up your butt and put you out of alignment and do all sorts of funny things. It's a gentle lift. I have other videos on zipping up. Okay, next myth. So if you have pelvic floor issues, you'll pretty much feel the same all the way throughout your monthly cycle. There's not much fluctuation in symptoms or anything like that. You'll pretty much feel the same. Is this true or false? It's false. It's a myth. It's a myth that if you have pelvic floor issues, you're going to feel the same every day. If you, if you have bladder leakage, it should be the exact same every day. If you have prolapse, it should feel the exact same every day. It is really important for people to know that it's natural for the symptoms to fluctuate throughout your monthly cycle if you are a woman who is menstruating. OK, it's really important to know that. So you're not caught off guard when you're getting close to your period and all of a sudden your bladder issues feel worse. You feel like you're leaking more. Your prolapse feels worse. 
What can happen is people can get close to their period and everything starts feeling worse and they start freaking out and thinking, oh no, I'm doing something wrong. Everything is falling apart. It's no good. Just know that it's normal for these fluctuations to occur. It happens for most people. They're going to notice those differences in symptoms. So just keep doing your good work that you're doing. Hopefully you've maybe joined one of my programs, Lift or Overcome. You're working on your pelvic health. Maybe you're working with a pelvic floor physical therapist. You're doing all the right things. Don't worry. If you have a down day, it's because we move in cycles. There are natural ups and downs. When we get closer to our period, literally our pelvic organs, our uterus is literally bigger and heavier. This can put pressure on the other pelvic organs. It can put pressure on the bladder and make your bladder issues feel worse. It can put pressure on your bladder if it's prolapsed and it's shifted in position. Oftentimes also when you're closer to your period, you're maybe constipated or bloated and that puts pressure on the pelvic organs and can make symptoms worse. Oftentimes our mood is a little bit not so good when we're close to our period, which can put stress in our body and our stress is carried in our pelvic floor. So when those muscles of our pelvis, pelvic floor get tense, it can make our symptoms feel worse. So all of these things combined, plus the hormonal shifts that happen, it can change the laxity, laxity in our tissues. All of these changes add up to make things feel worse close to our period. But the good news is just take it easy on yourself. Take care of yourself because after your period goes, you're going to feel a lot better. Okay. So ups and downs are normal. You are normal. You are okay. You're going to be okay. Keep going. Next myth is your vagina should look exactly the same after childbirth. That's a myth. Our vaginas <laughs> are going to change over the years. It's just a fact. And so for people who are very, very worried about the changes as you age, whether or not you've had a baby, just know that it's normal and natural for things to change a little bit. And I'm not here to make this sound defeating or like, oh my gosh, just there's no hope. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just take care of your body, love yourself. Even if things look a little bit different down there, feel a little bit different down there, just do what you can to help yourself. See a pelvic floor physical therapist, go through one of my courses or programs like Lift or Overcome, depending on what you need. Do what you can to take care of yourself, but just know that things may look and feel a little different than they did before. As long as you're doing what you can do to live a pelvic floor friendly lifestyle, which is what I teach, and to keep your muscles strong and resilient and supple, then you're doing the right thing. Just know that we change as we get older and that's okay. Your body is not broken. So many people come to me and say they feel broken, but you're not. Okay. The next thing is if you've never had a baby or if you had a cesarean section, you're completely 100% protected from prolapse and bladder leakage. Unfortunately, that's actually a myth. So if you have not ever had a baby, you can still have bladder leakage or pelvic organ prolapse. Now, some reasons that could happen is maybe you um, just are very sedentary and the muscles of your pelvic floor just aren't strong enough. They're not active. They're either sh too short and too tight, or they're just kind of not very on. <laughs> and so they need to be more active. That's one reason it could happen. Another reason is if you have chronic constipation and are constantly straining to go to the bathroom, you can develop prolapse and bladder issues too. If you're constantly having to push to go to the bathroom. Another reason this could happen is if you have a, if you're very, very active and do a lot of lifting on the job or in your life, maybe you have certain super heavy duty sports or weightlifting activities, and you don't know how to lift correctly. Some people don't even ever think about their core at all when they're lifting things, or they don't think about breathing properly. And so they hold their breath when they lift and they strain when they lift. And if you do that over and over and over again, even if you've never had a baby, it can still cause problems down the road. Okay. Two more. Prolapse and bladder leakage are just a regular part of getting older and surgery is the only option. That is a myth. Okay, so prolapse and bladder leakage, yes, they are more common to occur as we get older. It's more common, but it doesn't mean that it has to happen. It doesn't have to happen for anybody. And if it does happen, if you do develop prolapse or bladder leakage, it doesn't mean that there's nothing you can do about it. You're just destined 
to not ever exercise again because you're afraid of leaking and you're destined to always feel like you have a tampon stuck in your vagina because you have prolapse. Not true. There are things you can do to help. And surgery is not the only option. For some people, it is the best option at a certain point, but it's really important to do conservative treatment methods first, to try going to a pelvic floor physical therapist, to try doing one of my programs or courses from the comfort of your own home, to try to do things on your own, to naturally strengthen these muscles or relax these muscles, depending on what you need, and also learn how to live a lifestyle that is safe and healthy for your pelvic floor. A lot of people have had prolapse and bladder issues and have completely resolved them with no surgery by doing my work or working with a pelvic floor physical therapist. Okay. The last one is that a tight vagina is something to really strive for. I have so many women coming to me saying, I just want a tight vagina for my partner. That is not what we want to be thinking about. We don't want a tight vagina. We want a strong, supple, resilient vagina that's responsive and has great sensation and can really feel good during intimacy. But we don't just want tight. As I was mentioning earlier, if your muscles are just tight, they're actually weak. So tight, tight muscles aren't strong muscles. Strong muscles are muscles that can go through the full range of motion and can respond. They can quickly and easily contract when they need to and relax when they need to. For sex to feel really good for you and your partner, you want to be able to contract and release. You want muscles that aren't just tight. If they're just tight, they're probably going to be painful. They're also not strong. So just tight muscles are not what we're going for. We want resilient muscles that know how to contract and relax. I think we've gone through all the myths here, but there's lots of them. And as you can see, there's a lot of things you might not have known. So now that you have this knowledge, put it to good use. Go out there and and think about your pelvic floor when you're doing your daily activities of life. Think about not just kegeling all day and trying to make those muscles tight and strong. Think about the release as well. Think about activating your entire core the next time you're lifting something, breathing, not holding your breath. Try not to push to go to the bathroom when you're having a bowel movement. And most of all, if you feel like you don't have a lot of knowledge or awareness about the pelvic floor, talk to somebody. Go see a physical therapist in your area. Talk to your physical therapist. Get an examination or go through one of my online courses. I have lots of options. You can check the video notes or description for links. And there's so much you can do to help yourself feel strong, sexy, confident, and healthy down here for the whole rest of your life. Get started today. It really will awaken you on a whole nother level to start caring for this part of your body right there. It's a really important part of your body. And there are so much you can do to help yourself. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. Share it with a friend who needs it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more great pelvic health information. I'll see you next time.